Buenas tardes. Primero que nada quería agradecer a, a los amigos de Genexus. Good afternoon. In the first place, I wanted to thank uh, the Nexus friends for this very kind invitation. Um, I've got a, a weird Uruguayan accent. Uh, I've been away from Uruguay for quite some time. I graduated from the University of the Republic of Uruguay. I've already met some friends, and it's a unique opportunity because the university prepares us technically, but also to um, conquer many challenges. So it's wonderful to be here again. We're going to be talking about some experiences, um, something that's happened to me in SAP. Others have been very successful, others have not. Before SAP, I worked at a Neofenosa neo company, and from then onwards, um, some wonderful experiences started traveling along many countries. And uh, I went to Spain, where I lived for a year. Then I came back to Uruguay. I worked in, at uh, the telecom company. I'm sorry, the electrical company. Then I met my wife here, and we went to Nicaragua, where we implemented a business network system. Then we went to Costa Rica. And then we got to Brazil. And my uh, daughter uh, was born here in Uruguay, but she's lived in Brazil all her life. In 2003, I went to, I joined SAP. Um, I was living in Sao Paulo then, and I was lucky to um, visit many countries, implementing projects, and um, meeting many customers. My, nom my name is Alberto Oppenheimer, and I'm SAP responsible uh, in Latin America for all kinds of SAP solutions. I feel very proud to be here in this event. Eugenio made a wonderful presentation about SAP. He knows SAP better than anyone else. It's like as if he was a, an SAP employee. And what we are doing is, is very interesting. It's interesting for um, SAP people and for Genexus people. Um, my question is, what do you think this is? Do you know? Any idea? No one dares? Well, this is a presentation. When I was working in the pre-sales area in Brazil, a consultant made a presentation to a customer. Let me show you what happened. Hello. I am SAP, and I'm going to make a presentation of our solution. Uh, you're very young, and I don't think you could teach me anything that I don't know. Well, I think this happens to us quite frequently. A young man goes up to a customer and to talk about SAP. And if the SAP is someone with experience sitting on the other hand, on the other side of the table, the solution, the, the result is not very good. If you have a very junior salesman, um, well, you may be interrupted even before you start with your presentation. Now, what's happened is that this young person was, was very senior in SAP because he had implemented several projects with high complexity customers. He was certified in all modules, but the image that he projected was that uh, he was too junior. So uh, his meeting was not uh, that good when he started. But then the customers uh, could see uh, the consultant's experience, this consultant's experience, and uh, um, all things ended well. and. Uh, the customer, this customer was quite impressed by this young man. This is backed up by a methodology that I suppose you all know, which is situational leadership. It's a book by Tim Blanchard, who basically says that whenever we learn something new, we have four levels of maturity, one, two, three, and four. If you are one, you are junior, four, you are senior. So, I'm going to tell you about this methodology, what this methodology is about, and you're going to see that it's quite simple, and um, Blanchard would always give an example, and he says, when you're a child, you're given a bike, 
as a gift, and then you go through several stages. The first one is when you are an enthusiastic beginner. When you are four or five years old and you are given your first bike, your first experience and feeling is that you're extremely happy. But this is what happens when you start riding, you fall down. Now, immediately, the first feeling you have as a child is you want to give the bike back. Don't, I don't want to talk about this bike. But then you have the leaders. In this case, it could be your parents or your brothers or your uncles and would provide us lots of support. And then we start learning little by little. Now, once you start uh, with your first steps, you, you uh, become more confident and the leader would support you and uh, not give you much of a direction and, uh, and you start seeing how things work until you get to, uh, to self-confidence, gaining confidence, you, you know how to do that. This is a very simple example, which is riding a bike. And the truth is that it can be applied to anything. It could be applied to learning a new product or a new methodology or whatever. So truly speaking, I learned it. I learned it in 2010. I, I was at the SAP leadership team where we train 80 uh, managers in the company and we put all this into practice and it was very good. We could help them and uh, develop people there. Well, there are some experiences that are not very good, but it's happened to us before we learned the methodology and I learned it uh, afterwards. This is the first case called uh, under supervising. Uh, we have given less support, less instruction, and in this case, uh, we had a manager in the team who had to make some hiring things, and we asked him to do it, and uh, of course, the manager said, of course, I'm going to do it, and uh, uh, what uh, we hadn't realized was that he was a D1 person. He had never hired anyone. At that time, I didn't make any validation, and the person started interviewing some days later. The manager called me in, and he said, we've got the finalists. Choose the best one. And uh, of course, the first finalist came in. I explained the process to her. I, uh, we explained the skills required. And when we started validating them, I realized that uh, this person didn't know the main skills. Then we went to the second candidate. The same thing happened. We validated um, skills, and uh, the third candidate didn't either, and so on and so forth. And what happened at the end was that we had to start all over again. Well, clearly, this was an experience that uh, uh, showed us that we hadn't uh, included that uh, uh, situation of leadership. This is another case. This is over-supervising. We're given more support and more instructions than required. That time, this was a, con a senior consultant of SAP. Before visiting the customer, we uh, made some role playing. Uh, the person uh, started with his presentation. He um, explained to us how the presentation was going to be like, and we interrupted him, you know. We gave him several instructions, we gave him suggestions, we gave him more suggestions, and clearly the consultants started being discouraged, you know, this was a senior consultant and he had done this several times and then at the end of the day what happened is that uh, he was so discouraged that he said, well, all right, look, I don't need uh, that much uh, indication, um, and, and we, are, we were clearly given over 
um, instructions. So situational leadership tells us that uh, we've got uh, these four stages from D1 to D4, and depending on the stage you are in, you have to apply different uh, styles of leadership. And that's why the skills of our situational leadership is to make a diagnosis. That is, I'm going to give a certain task to someone. I have to assess whether that person is D1 or D4. And I know this just by talking with the person. The second thing is flexibility. If it's a D1 or D2, will require more support and instructions. If it's D4, he would need less support and uh, guidelines. It's important to implement uh, the concept then to uh, come up with partnership for performance, you know, to comply with your goal and uh, provide the d uh, correct dose of uh, uh, support and instructions. And then you have two leadership behaviors. One is directions, uh, tell someone exactly what he has to do. The second one is support, help him. Many times we think we have to help someone at all times and because we are D4. And, uh, and we can um, um, get someone who can help this person in that activity, because that person may also be a D4. So if you go back to these examples, after I learned this methodology, I went through a similar situation simply by asking a simple question, you know, have you ever hired a company consultant? Uh, the company could say, well, no, Alberto, I've never done this. And so I would uh, give him someone who has lots of experience to help him. So just by a simple question, I can make a diagnosis and provide the required uh, support. In the case of the presentation, for instance, this person started his presentation and we can say, well, there are people with experience in this room. If you need any support, please ask, instead of giving instructions or support or opinions, you know, to agree. And that's what we mean by partnership. This is what happened to me last year. This is a case of self-leadership or self-assessment. That's for your own benefit. Last year, I was asked to be the CEO of SAP Brazil. And when I took up that position, the first feeling I had is that, well, that's good, it's a new challenge, it's a new position. And basically what I did was some sort of self-assessment. I mean, what activities do I know, which ones I don't know, what activities, I mean, I'm a D4, I don't need any support or instructions, but um, I didn't know the activities of D1, so I had to identify what colleagues in the company uh, and in this case, my boss could help me in these activities. Now, what has this got to do with SAP and GeneXus then? Well, this framework is also applied to companies. There are companies which are D1 in, in product quality or in, in customer service. So we are D1 to D4 in in. in topics or in certain topics and certain issues, you needn't be D4 in everything. Now, if we take this to SAP, we know that uh, the market performance uh, is, is uh, ERP. And uh, um, we are not D4 we have some things that uh, we don't have a perception of leadership. And that's the case of uh, uh, reality. Sometimes reality is different. I'm going to show you some cases so that you can see how SAP has a capacity in the Internet of Things and in the cloud. Hub-off increases productivity and profitability in cattle production business by empowering cattle producers to manage their livestock easily and allows third-party agribusiness consultants to get access to detailed reports with livestock technical KPIs. The farmer can now keep an eye on the cattle wherever it is in real time from anywhere.
It all began with a simple request from 78-year-old Mr. Castillos, owner of Alvarada's farm in southern Brazil, who needed digital access to his livestock data. His cattle information was stored in paper notes, handwritten spreadsheets, and notebooks. He is not tech savvy and never felt comfortable with complex interfaces. He, however, finds modern touchscreen mobile devices easier to operate. In fact, the problem Mr. Castillos was facing also affects thousands of other cattle producers worldwide. That's only the beginning. Brazilian farmers need to improve productivity and American farmers have plenty of space to improve profitability. While there is common knowledge in management processes, medications, supplementary feed, and genetics, there are not many software options out there that are capable of bringing all this data together and generating valuable insights from it. Brabov built an app for mobile devices to store all the analog cattle producing data. There was only one fundamental requisite, ultimate simplicity. Through Brabov's solution, cattlemen can manage their farms from anywhere, online or even offline on the field. Daily activities like cattle identification, vaccination, weighing, feeding and movements are easily done. Insights like identifying low performing animals, processes with better results, comparing performance of different groups of animals and discovering how much money is being made and how much beef and milk is being produced are just a few taps away. With SAP HANA, Braboff was able to develop a weight prediction algorithm that is able to accurately predict 120,000 weights in about 90 seconds using a model with more than 1 million animals to analyze. That not only allows the farmer to identify low performing animals in advance, but also helps him planning his sales, purchases, production, and much more. This is an example of a startup prepared by um, SAP employees. Any employee can uh, give us an idea, and if it's good, it can be developed. This was a colleague from uh, Porto Alegre, and this app is being used for many, many customers in Brazil and abroad. Whoever is interested in starting a startup with SAP, you've got the link and you have access to the uh, Safana Club. Is there anyone from Argentina here? Anyone? Yes, from our friends. For our friends from Argentina, perhaps you already know this, but um, let me show you another case from the city of Buenos Aires. There is no way of having a modern administration solving people's problems if you do not manage all this in paper. Well, you can acquire technology and IT systems that help us to order our uh, internal processes and also to be connected and to be closer to the neighbors of this city. Well, in SAP, we record over 8,000 works done. We manage uh, this large number of works in due time and form and efficiently for our neighbors in Buenos Aires. To have an SAP system is absolutely necessary. We are managing, uh, we are managing Buenos Aires, taking into account citizen participation. Uh, the city has uh, problems in real time, so we need solutions in real time. Citizens can file their claims in the social networks, and uh, we uh, have a 
board here with SAP Hana. We listen to what all neighbors say through the social networks. And Hana allows us to connect with sensors that are in public spaces and process them in real time. And uh, we can um, cross all this with uh, works plans so that uh, we can have a dashboard which uh, gives us alerts on uh, uh, the situation and uh, we can measure satisfaction levels. There are projects that are coming soon and one of them is to have an intelligent city. To have an intelligent city means to replicate what we've done in public spaces in other governmental um, areas like education and health and public transport. I think that uh, SAP will be key in a couple of years for Buenos Aires. It allows us to think and imagine a city that is going to be fully intelligent and completely different. Well, this is a real example from the city of Buenos Aires. It's an example given in many events. They are using the HANA platform to manage all emergencies and everything that happens in the city. Perhaps you can send me the IP, the iPad here. puede? Bueno, si no volvemos acá a la presentación y cualquier cosa en el break lo, lo mostramos. Aquí básicamente lo que Well, basically what I'm going to show you now is a video showing evidence of the HANA uh, cloud platform, how you can generate apps uh, quickly. And as we've seen in the previous talk, this is already available in the Genexus version 15. Imagine the best business site, a place where enticing web design meets your business needs, where an engaging user experience results in satisfied customers and a boost in your sales creates immediate action items for your teams. A site that is an entry point to all your crucial business functions. Now you can stop imagining. Meet the new SAP HANA Cloud Platform Portal Service. With a smooth design, it makes building business websites simple and easy. Enhance your website and take your users to new levels with a full suite of SAP experiences like Fiori Cloud Edition, Cloud for Customer, Success Factors and more. Available from the central hub of SAP HANA Cloud Platform Portal Service. Add out-of-the-box Fiori apps provided by SAP, as well as any third-party application with seamless integration for a smooth end-to-end -end flow on browsers and mobile devices. Site developers enjoy full integration with a powerful SAP Web IDE, complete with wizards for creating site and page templates. Create your sites using the new site designer with easy-to-use capabilities, predefined out-of-the-box templates, content, and apps. Publishing content is as easy as the click of a button. Shorten the end-to-end -end development cycle and enjoy high-quality design for lower costs. Experience the new cloud portal on SAP HANA Cloud Platform. It's time to get started. Find out what you can do with the new SAP HANA Cloud Platform portal service. Very well. This is an example uh, using the HANA Cloud Platform. Imagine a company, a water works company. This is the water distribution, and you can see all the installations, the main warnings. We can see the infrastructure, and we can also see the production. Now, in this case, if you look at that red warning, it means that there is a problem there. And uh, 
and you have sensors and in real time you can you can see some problems and you can see what's happening in this substation you can uh, look at this in 3d you can see the facilities and up at the top you see 240 224 hours this means that the probability of having a failure in 224 hours you can you can check it and you can correct the problem and in, but you can predict the problem in case there is a maintenance problem and also down below you can see the suppliers that we can um, allocate to solve that uh, service order who has the best uh, um, uh, price who is the contractor who's got the lower price and the best quality you can do all that in real time so you can do maintenance work in real time. You can compare suppliers, for instance, who I want to uh, hire, who has the best service, the best price. And of course, you can complete the order in real time. So uh, this is the way of using the platform for certain scenarios, the Internet of Things, and make predictions with lots of information and uh, and you can do that in real time. Now, going back to the presentation, what happens in the market, basically, is that there are companies with SAP systems. There are others that don't. And that's why we launched the HANA Cloud platform that basically allows us to be integrated and to have SAP and non-SAP solutions in the cloud or on-premise uh, to create hybrid scenarios and to be able to use, as Eugenio said, the capacity to create apps in HTML5 with the um, security. I mean, when you go to the cloud world, uh, to be to be doing analytics in real time, to be able to make predictions, as I showed you, and to be connected with the scenarios of the Internet of Things. And what we've done with this launching today of GeneXus, GeneXus is generating elements for this platform. If we look at the concept of uh, situational leadership, uh, in some things, SAP is D4 like the HANA Cloud platform. And GeneXus is D4 in some cases and in some areas developing high speed and excellent quality apps. So the spirit of this alliance was particularly that one, to take advantage of the expertise of each company to be able to offer solutions for all our customers and partners. Now, who's teaching who here? Well, some people may say it's the father teaching the son, his son uh, teaching a lesson. But uh, uh, a father is, is D4, for instance, teaching maths. But perhaps his son is D4 in uh, uh, dealing with iPads, and sometimes they are far smarter than we are. So it doesn't matter how old you are. The importance is uh, the experience and the confidence and trust you generate. At the end of the day, we are all learners and teachers at the same time uh, because of the evolution of technology at present, this is quite frequent. And to conclude and give an answer to my question at the beginning, I can see three things. Um, the question was, is leadership innate or learned? Is it inborn or, or learned? Well, there are many factors that influence in this, our education, our parents, our friends, the university, our jobs. The second thing is your passion. Are you passionate? Do you want to be a leader and you feel a passion to help others? And th third point is you learn for it. You've got the passion. If you learn, if you like something, you can learn it. And that's the example of situational leadership. But there are many methodologies that help us um, to develop. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attendance. If there is any question, I'm going to be around uh, over the breaks and uh, during dinner time. Thank you.